What's going on everybody? So GW has basically showed us for the most part what's coming for the rest of 2017. And with that said, uh, that includes their chapter approved book, which is interesting, as well as the last two codices, Blood Angels and Dark Angels, so the Angels of Death coming in for, for 2017, um, as well as some model stuff coming as well. So uh, it's an interesting bit of a reveal and understanding of what's coming and I just want to do a stream of conscious thought ramble on it and share your thoughts as well so for the chapter approved 2017 dealy I was expecting this in December not so much uh, bef uh, you know at, towards the end of December not so much at the end of November beginning of December time period doesn't matter right it's just a couple of weeks difference there but it's cool it's it's a, a decently sized book for sure and it does include a lot of stuff in there it's it's not a fluffy book per se, but more so um, some background info perhaps on things, but more so ways to play, a toolkit to play, uh, updating things to play as, and including things like Apocalypse and uh, narrative play stuff like Planet Strike and match play stuff such as missions and objective markers and the like. There is a little bit of a band-aid in here with the expanded faction rules for those forces that don't have a codex yet. But it's not just a Band-Aid book. It's more than that. It just happens to have a Band-Aid section in there as well. So, not a bad book. The appendix is also pretty cool. You can read what's going on in this book on GW's website. I'm not going to go and break it down too much. But not a bad book. And the price point is very fair. 35 bucks here in the States uh, is definitely, I think, a fair price point for what this book is. Um, I would have easily thought they would have gone 50 to 55 dollars at least but 35 is not what i was expecting i think it's very fair especially because only a portion is a band-aid so even when the orcs get their codex and the necrons get their codex with space holes and so on the 11 different factions in here with their expanded um additional rulings for themselves um which is cool but even when they get their codices this book will still be useful because when the Necrons get their book, you don't need the expanded faction rules here or the index book. You got your codex. It's got everything and more. So um, you'll still have match play missions, apocalypse set up, planet strike, so on and so forth. So cool book that way. Now, with that said, um, one of the weird things is the inclusion of the Land Raider variants, because it gives you guidelines for designing your own data sheets for Land Raiders, it includes a blank data sheet to do so, and then it gives you five example data sheets to use in open play. So they're probably not going to be use, usable in match play, I'm guessing, but I could be wrong. Um, you know, and for fun, if you're just doing a standard mission battle, I'm sure amongst your buddies, they won't care if you're using one of the five examples or your own, provided you follow the guidelines. And that's, that's the, well, I'll get to that. I'll, I'm not going to jump ahead yet. Five example data sheets. We have five listed factions, Ultramarine, Space Souls, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and Chaos. I'm guessing it's one Land Raider per faction listed, giving us our five example data sheets. And I'm hoping it's that way and not just five generic example data sheets that those five factions can use. The reason I'm hoping it's more specific is it lets you further build it towards that particular faction's feel and strengths and whatnot. And especially in the case of Chaos, it could feel a lot more chaosy than just being a spiky land raider. So we'll see. Now it includes a blank data sheet to create your own, and it gives you guidelines for designing your own data sheet. I'm hoping the guidelines are really specifically cut and dry on, okay, here is your base land raider cost without any weapons, just, just a stat line for a land raider. And then if you're going to add these weapons, here's an additional cost. If you're going to add this rule, the, you can pick from these rules, these weapons, these whatever. And I'm hoping it's a lot more almost limiting in a sense because, you know, you're going to have people with land raiders with 70 million LAS cannons and whatnot and a price point that a regular land raider could easily be the thing childish people would do. So I'm assuming the guidelines are going to be really structured in a sense, I'm hoping. Base chassis cost point wise, weapon points depending on what weapons you put on there, what options and upgrades you give it innately and so forth. Hopefully that all gets is all spelled out for the for uh for designing. We'll see. 
It's weird that it's in this book, though, just because it's it's random, right? It's in the open play, so it's pretty much just for open play, it seems, maybe. But we have Apocalypse listed, and then this. and But there's nothing for other factions. It's not like a Battlesuit variant or a Wraith Lord variant or whatnot. It's just, this seems just kind of random. I do like the objective markers being a thing that they have tutorial-wise and how to ideas and guides for building your own objective markers regardless of what faction you play. I like that because it shows us Tyr and it shows us, you know, Dark Eldar and Necron examples. And that's cool because we, um, for a long time, have had just Imperial and then Spiky Imperial, a.k.a. Chaos, objectives, terrain, uh, stratagem, markers, and the like. And over the past few years or so, GW has experienced it been more open and expansive to include, you know, Orc and Tau and maybe some Eldar stuff. And keeping up like this, showing us Xenos markers, maybe even producing stuff in the future kit-wise for terrain or, or stratagems or markers for Xenos and the like, I think is always a step in the right direction. Because while 40k is an Imperium-centric game, if you think about the whole story of it, it's all set up by the Imperium or the fledgling Imperium conquering the galaxy or most of it in the great crusade for the great crusade to be cut short essentially by the horus heresy giving us our chaos forces and then battles being waged across the galaxy mostly on the body of the imperium's empire we have the tower empire it's all set of planets we have some orc held planets but a lot of it is uh you know fought on imperial worlds whether it's an active imperial world with imperial citizenry and all that on it or if it's a dead world with imperial ruins you have xenos fighting xenos on an imperial planet like that or imperium fighting xenos typically on an imperial planet but you also have the concept of conquering worlds you also have the concept of the other xenos factions having their own worlds even if it's temporarily such as tyranids when they infest a planet you could have that as a backdrop for a battle right and therefore have tyranny terrain overgrowths and whatnot. You could have a dark Eldari outposty thing set up outside of Kamar. You can make up an excuse for that. You have Necron worlds. You got Orc worlds. You got tyranny world. Oh, I should say Tau worlds. Tyranny worlds being eaten, like I already mentioned, and so on. So you do have that, even though it's an Imperium-centric driven game. And I always like seeing non-Imperial terrain and stuff. So. Long tangent for saying I like those objective marker inclusions. It's something small, but it's a step in the right direction, a continued step in the right direction, I feel. Anyway, um, what's funny is the chapter approved contains expanded faction rules for the 11 factions still without a codex. And it's funny because back in 4th edition, that would have been your entire range of codices out in 40k. In fact, you probably would have had maybe one codex missing in this release schedule back in 4th edition. Um, basically meaning the last codex would have come out sometime early 2018 for 4th edition and you would have all the codices covered. So GW has definitely expanded 40k's uh, game quite a bit with all the different facts and stuff like the Mechanicum and the Imperial Knights and them breaking down Eldar to have the Harlequins their own thing and so on and so forth. So pretty expanded game when you think about it for several editions ago so with that said um that's chapter approved i think it's definitely gonna be worth the buy so let's say you play orcs right even once you get your codex and therefore the band-aid index and the chapter approved expanded faction rules band-aid won't be needed you still have a book that will be useful for you if you want to play apocalypse do planet strike other missions objective marker ideas and so forth so I definitely think it's a worthwhile book to invest in if you so desire. It's quasi set up, it's not required, but it almost quasi feel, feels almost quasi required. So I said, we'll see as time goes on past it. Anyways, from there, we know what's coming in hot for December. The big things are the Blood Angels Codex and the Dark Angels Codex are coming. Uh, we're not going to see too much in the way, I would assume, of crazy kits for them coming out alongside them. It's probably just a book to update the rules for themselves to be in 8th edition because they're pretty well structured as it is, but we'll have to wait and see. For easy-to-build kits, because they're coming with more stuff, we got the Aggressors, 
primary you know the primary aggressors with flame gauntlets we got a redemptor dreadnought as an easy to build kit which i did not expect to see um we have Sly Marbo coming with a whole bunch of beams coming alongside of it. And for Death Guard, we have a, a Blight Hauler vehicle thingy. And we got, um, looks like an easy build Blight Lord Terminators and Lord of Contagion. Uh, so that'll be interesting. And there's some Age of Sigmar stuff, but not talking about that in this ramble. So, lastly, we have two Lieutenant kit, uh, models. We have a Blood Angel Lieutenant and a Dark Angels Lieutenant. So these are Primaris, so Primaris Lieutenants for the Blood Angels and the Dark Angels, one model for each. This is cool because it's sculpted detail on Primaris for a specific chapter. Why this is cool is because you could easily look at these Lieutenants and see, okay, well, if they take this hand and make it its own bit to take this torso front or this head or this clamshell torso piece, make it its own bit and make bits similar, you could easily turn this Lieutenant model take some of the bits, expand upon the idea, and have Primaris upgrade uh, sprues. We have Space Marine upgrade sprues for the Dark Angels and the Blood Angels and so on. Now we could definitely see coming in the future perhaps Primaris upgrade sprues, which I felt were inevitable anyway to be a thing, because why not uh, make money that way? But seeing these Lieutenant models for the Blood Angels and the Dark Angels really helped cement it home in my mind, because especially the Blood Angel one, that torso front piece is a winged blood drop. That could easily be a torso front piece on a sprue to, to connect to a normal back piece. Then you can have a winged chalice, and then you could have like a triple blood drops or whatever. Um, you could do some things that way. Have it be very blood angel, and you can have that that sword, that uh, glaive. I forget what it's called, glaive and carmine, maybe. I forget. Uh, but you could have that set up and that look be a part of that sprue as well maybe another thing maybe an axe a blood angel axe um maybe a chalice in hand right um stuff like that plus any other random bits maybe even a backpack concept on a sprue you don't need to do shoulder pads with the shoulder pads are the same size same, same thing with the helmet um necessarily in this case you don't need to do either and for the dark angels you could do something similar yeah you could have a more dark angel looking power sword bit on a sprue, maybe a plasma weapon bit on the sprue, maybe a Dark Angel Hellblaster plasma rifle thingy, a Hellblaster thing um, that has a Dark Angel symbol on it. You would have maybe some robe bits, that's a bit more in depth, but because it's robe, so it's front and back and potentially even legs to kind of fit in properly. But you could also have the sculpted torso front plates with the Dark Angel's symbol on it and whatnot. And then in this case, you could do some helmets, even though helmets are the same size. You could have a helmeted Primaris or a, a hooded Primaris helmet specific look as well as uh, unhelmeted hooded features as well. Um, my point is though, you could look at these lieutenants and you could see how you could break it down and theoretically turn them into upgrade sprues, which I hope happens. And I hope that then happens for, you know, the Space Wolves, the Ultramarines, Imperial Fist. I would love for it to happen with the Raven Guard and so forth. Just it just feels like an inevitable progression that hopefully will happen sooner rather than later, especially seeing these two lieutenant models being chapter specific. Anyways, uh, that's really it for my thoughts. It's kind of a bit all over the place. I am still working on the same two models I've been working on for a couple of months now because I, I do very limited painting here and there. Uh, but I do want to get them finished. The Captain Test model is a lot closer to completion than the Segment Terminator, but... Hopefully over time, I'll be able to finally finish those. We'll see. Anyways, thanks for sticking through this random ramble. Uh, share your thoughts in the comment section. And until next time, take it easy.